So, um, welcome everybody to this new um, episode of the Multiphysics channel. Today, we will address the question of heat and mass transfer modeling, and more precisely, uh, the analogy between these two fixed phenomena and how we can exploit it. So, um, a few words about myself. I'm Alvaro Ramos. I will be your host today. I'm a mechanical engineering at the PFL. Um, I mainly focused during my studies in applied physics in the field of fluid mechanics and uh, heat transfer. So here you can see some of some images of previous uh, experimental and uh, numerical projects. I really like mountain and hiking and two throughs, two throughs and one line by myself, a swimmer, never understood the electricity and racing sports fan. But let's directly go into the topic of today. So the motivation, why we should care about heat and mass transfer. Actually, there's processes that happen all over nature and industry. And uh, here you can see two examples of them. One of them is drying of, in this case, fish in the North of Europe. And also evaporation process in regions is important um, to understand uh, the atmospheric dynamics. But physically speaking, there are a lot of other physical phenomena associated with mass transfer, like natural convection, phase change, vapor pressure, air saturation, cooling associated to evaporation, and so on. But basically, all of those complex processes that we give different names to them, they sum up to three different uh, conservation laws of momentum, energy, and mass. And that's my point today. So I would like to go a little bit deep, like the basis at least of how uh, the mass and heat transfer analogy is formulated. So I will need this group of equations. So why, let's go uh, to an example of, uh, of heat transfer and let's try to, do, try, try to do the mass transfer analogy and answer why this holds and why is this important. Uh, so you here see the case of a free flow on a, on a flat plane. And we see how, in this case, both uh, bond, momentum boundary layer and thermally, thermal boundary layer developing, but actually they are not similar, although they are both boundary layers. Um, so this is basically a typical heat transfer a problem where you have a heat exchange between the fluid flow and the, and the solid element um, through convection, right? So, uh, the physical law that governs the heat transfer, we call it the Fourier law. The Fourier law is just basically uh, the gradient of a scalar, in the, say, the temperature times the conductivity, which gives us the heat flux. But actually, um, the mass flux is formulated in a very similar way. We just have the fixed law, which expresses the gradient of a mass concentration times a diffusivity constant. Uh, also, not only the physical law, but also the governing equations of temperature and or energy and um, mass concentrations are in a similar shape. Basically, both of them have an advection term, which expresses how the term, how the temperature is transported by the flow, another diffusion term, which expresses uh, which um, says how, how the temperature will diffuse by, by itself. And actually the mass uh, mass transport equation has a really, really similar shape though. In the case of the diffusion, co um, in the case of alpha, the diffusion coefficient here, we don't have it, but we have something uh, at an analogous constant. So basically, we see that the physical laws formulated in the heat uh, and mass fluxes, and also the, the, the governing equations are the same. So what, that's why we say that heat and mass are transported and diffused in a similar way, which means that if we have a problem that's involving both processes, if we solve one of them, heat, for instance, heat uh, transport and diffusion, then we can uh, have an idea or we have quantitative values of how the mass will diffuse in this very specific problem. So in the end, we are reducing the complexity because we don't have to, through, to solve the three groups of equations, but just the fluid flow and the heat transfer problem. So in addition to this physical law I mentioned before, actually in engineering, we like to, to simplify things a little bit to make it more practical. And instead of using physical laws, we have also the engineering laws, I call them, which is basically formulated this uh, heat flux as a constant times a temperature difference, which in the case I showed before, the flat plate can be the temperature of the plane minus the temperature of the flow far away from it. So basically we have a convection coefficient which is summarizes and simplifies uh, the geometry uh, complexity or the fluid flow complexity behind. 
And in fluid dynamics, we like to do a lot is to simplify, uh, um, to, um, to make the things dimensionless. So we're taking this convection coefficient and times a specific characteristic length and the conductivity, we get the Nusselt number, which basically expressing the ratio between the heat transfer by convection and the heat transfer by conduction. Um, so one thing we can do when we have the Nusselt number is taking the idea as just mentioned before, the heat and mass transfer are diffused in a similar way, is to make this Nusselt number equal to Sherwood number. The Sherwood number is just having also, hiding also in a dimensionless way, the, the mass um, convection coefficient. So we can say the Nusselt number is equal to the Sherwood number. That's, that's, that's more or less what, what I just said before, but instead of words, written in dimensionless number. But actually, there is an analogy called the Reynolds one that's saying, hey, not only the Nusselt number is equal to the Sherwood number, but also a friction coefficient, to a friction coefficient we call F times the Reynolds, saying that not only heat and mass are transported and diffused in a similar way, but also we can make it an algorithm to the flow, how the, how the momentum is transported and diffused. So in this case, actually, we only need to solve the fluid flow problem have also the values for the heat transfer and the mass transfer um, fluxes. But we know that this, because of the shape of the, of the governing equation for the momentum, this analogy doesn't hold that well. And usually it's applied when frontal numbers is around 0 .0, 1.0 and not for a general cases. In 1934, Tito and Coburn come to a different analogy, which is not relating heat, mass, and momentum, but only heat and mass. In this case, what we have is the Nussel is equal to the Sherwood times a uh, ratio of the both uh, thermal and, and mass diffusivities. So what we have here is that to calculate the Sherwood number, we need the Nussel number. And to calculate the Nussel number, we need at least to solve the heat transfer problem and the fluid flow problem. Note that in the Reynolds analogy, we have what we just need to solve one of them. So here I will show an example of how this heat and mass transfer analogy can be used in practical purposes and uh, how it will be the procedure. So here you can see um, a case where I set a 3D pipe. In this 3D pipe, I'm imposing a block profile of velocity in the, in the left part of it. And then this, this, this flow is, um, is developing with a specific profile. So it's, we have a boundary layer on the side of the pipe. And then at some point, I'm changing also the temperature. So in addition to the momentum boundary layer, we have a thermal boundary layer. What we can think about as this problem is not only having a heat due to the difference of temperature between the fluid and the wall, but also imagine let's have a, a, a water film close to this change of temperature. So that means that we will have a momentum to model the fluid flow. We we'll have also the temperature to model, so the heat, the change, and also the mass. But as we saw before, actually we just need the fluid flow and the heat equation to maybe to be able to calculate through the chilled coburn analogy, the mass, uh, the mass flux. So let's go this way. We'll just use the fluid flow equations. In this case, equivalent, I'm using a high um, Reynolds number. And also in addition to them, the the energy equations a little bit simplified uh, from its general form. So the goal is to, to use both of them to calculate the Nusselt number through the heat, the, the heat flux, which is going to be calculated using the Fourier law, and then to calculate the shear word using the heat transfer analogy, the mass and heat transfer analogy. So here you see some pictures uh, of how uh, the boundary layer appears on the side. Um, this boundary layer <clears throat> actually is really thin because we are having a Reynolds number and as we know uh, the, 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 the thickness of this boundary layer might depend on, is decreasing with, with the Reynolds number. And we also have this uh, thermal boundary layer developing when there is this change of temperature. So when we, when we, once we have this, so, this solution, what we can do is just we calculate the heat flux this heat flux using the Fourier law, and when, then we make it dimensionless. A little little here, usually to cut to, for the nozzle, what we have is um, different ways to make it dimensionless regarding especially the 
difference of temperature. So here I choose temperature of the flow and the average temperature in, in the section. So once we have this nozzle that obviously is decreasing with the in the position and different positions of the actual positions of the pipe, what I can calculate directly using the the total carbon analogy is the Sherwood number, which would just press the nozzle number times the Lewis to the power of one third. So we see that there is directly calculation of the mass transfer, and then with the mass transfer uh, and the mass uh, fluxes, so we can calculate how the 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 fluid in the in the um, in the in the walls close to the boundaries of the pipe, so a liquid, for instance, might be evaporated, just solving the fluid flow and the thermal equations. So uh, the highlights of this episode, as I said, heat and mass transfer analogy can be used to simplify complex multiphysics problems. The, the, the analogy holds because heat and mass are transported if it's in a similar way. They have the same constitutive equations for the heat flux, and we also have the same govern similar governing equations. And mass and heat conventions problem can be then modeled using the flow and the energy equations without necessarily needing to introduce the mass transport equations. So for you, I summarized a little bit here some of the equations I, 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 I mentioned before. So check them and go deep into them if you are more curious about here, this analogy holds from the mathematical point of view. So thanks all for joining today. I hope it was uh, in, interesting for you and might be useful in the future for your modeling problems. Thank you very much for the presentation, Alvaro. I have actually a question about limits. Do you know if this uh, analogy, it seems quite useful to avoid the difficult calculations involving mass transfer, but is there some limitations where, for example, I cannot use this analogy? Yes, so uh, actually in the paper of Chilton Corburn, um, one of the, the, the limitations then mentioned is when we say there is a, there is a resistance in the in the mass transfer so actually the analogy was proved experimental when they had a, a hot flow that's uh, going through a pipe and the the liquid surrounding the pipe it's uh, it's cold so the heat removed from the from the from the air is used to evaporate the, the liquid but we also can think of different problems where we, we are blowing uh, air which is not hot compared to the water then we will have uh, a resistance um, in the in the interface between the air and the fluid, and then the analogy will not hold, will not really hold because we have a resistance in this uh, in this interface between the air and the liquid. Mm -hmm. 